The next example I'm going to go through is, uh, again, I'm going to create simple random samples. I'm going to create 50 of them this time, though, and I'm going to make a histogram of the sample averages. So we're going to revisit creating simple random samples. Uh, we're going to use StatPro to do that, and then we're going to make a histogram of the sample averages. And we're going to expect that histogram to be approximately bell-shaped due to the central limit theorem, actually. Now, uh, this example is the one I go through in your session two. Um, under lesson two here, uh, the example that I'm going to go through is receive.xls. So this matches up with what I went through in lecture with you guys for the receive.xls file. So let's open that up in Excel. Here it is. Okay. We have uh, different accounts here of different sizes. There's three different sizes. One, size two, and size three. Uh, three being the largest accounts, two being the medium-sized ones, and one being the small ones. Uh, now, what I'm looking to do is sample. Um, I'm going to take 50 samples, each of size 15, out of the small accounts. There's a gap here included between the small and the medium accounts so that it makes it quick and easy to just highlight the small accounts and sample out of those. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take uh, 50 samples of size 15 out of the small accounts. Okay, that's my goal. Okay, and I'm going to use StatPro to do that. Okay, so out of my small accounts, I'm going to sample 50 samples of size 15 by doing the following. Under add-ins and stat pro, to generate simple random samples, go to statistical inference and generate random samples. And go, and in this case, highlight uh, all these headers and control shift down. Highlights all the small samples. Click OK. We want to generate 50 samples, each of size 50. Click OK. And let's have the samples start right here. Click OK. You can put them wherever you want. Uh, I'm just putting them there underneath this header. So here are my samples. There are 50 of them for each of size 15. Now, same as before. This 125 refers to account number 125. So this guy right here. Okay. So um, what I actually am interested in from account 125 is how much they owe. I want that 220. So I'm going to do the following. I'm going to go back and use VLOOKUP to get the dollar amount associated with that account number. Now one quick thing, control shift over, I'm going to copy all those headers and paste them down here um, and then use my VLOOKUP. Go look up that 125 in all of my accounts here. So control shift over, control shift down, comma, Okay, so back up here. Um, notice that all that data is actually called data here. Um, comma 4, because I want column 1, 2, 3, 4. I want the dollar amounts returned. And comma 0 will return an exact match. And the first one it finds is the one it will return. So it'll look first in the accounts. Okay. And close the bracket. And there we go. So 220. Now that is a dollar amount. Get rid of the decimal places. There aren't any there. And that matches up with account 125. If you double check, if you go down, they did indeed owe $220. So there is account 125. There they are right there. Yes, they owe $220. Whew, okay, I did my VLOOKUP correctly. Okay, now... When you try these same steps, you're going to get different numbers than me because it's a simple, it's a random sample. So every time you do the sampling, you should get uh, a different result. So here are my numbers. 
uh, from my VLOOKUP. Now we're going to copy those across. To copy them, highlight them all, and find the little black box in the bottom right corner and drag that across. Do that for all 50 samples. So there we go. There are 50 samples, each of size 50. Now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to now um, generate the sample averages from our 50 samples of size 15 out of the small account. Okay, so to do that, type equals average and get your averages from each of your samples. So just go highlight those guys and then copy that all the way across. And those are all of my averages. Okay, from each of my samples, there's my next average, there's my next one, and so on and so forth. There are my averages associated with each of my samples. The last thing I'm going to do, so what I'm stepping through right now is one of your lecture examples from lesson two. Just quickly to look and see which one I'm stepping through here under session two, lesson two on share out. Under the PowerPoint, right now I am stepping through uh, the following example. Okay, just taking a minute to load here. Okay, the files received.xls. Oh, it's just opening up here. And here we go. So I am stepping through uh, the following example here. Example 8.2. So in your PowerPoint under Lesson 2, it was received.xls we're working with. We have 280 accounts. We want to generate 50 random samples, each of size 15, from our small customers. Calculate the average amount owed, and then construct a histogram of size 50 from these averages. Okay. So that's the last thing we need to do. So let's copy that. Okay. And put that in Excel here. So that's our last step. So this is uh, example 8.2 from your lecture. Okay. So last thing is to construct a histogram of these 50 averages. To do that, I need to do one more thing. I'm going to select all those averages, control shift over to do that, copy them, and I need to paste special them. So click on uh, cell G43 in this case and paste special, paste the values, and transpose them. That transposes them down this column. Okay, good. And there should be 50 of them there. We can double check that. That looks about right. Now to make a histogram, very last step in this example, under add-ins, under stat pro, and charts, histograms is what you want to choose. Okay, and we want to construct the histogram of all of these data. And one more thing before we do that, sorry, we need to add a header here. Okay. So one thing we need to add in here, Stat Pro, when you're working with a data set, needs to have a name for that data set above it. So now when we go and create our histogram, we select our sample averages. We need uh, a header there at the top, so sample averages, perfect. And then control shift down, grab all those guys, click OK. And select our sample averages. And make a histogram of them. Um, now, uh, when we're creating our histogram, our minimum value picks something that's uh, relatively a nice number. That's 
below this 227.143. So I could have picked 227. Now, anything, any, sorry, anything ending with fives or tens is optimal. In terms of your number of categories, there are 50 of them total. On Excel here, 50 data, sorry. So on Excel, um, we'll actually want to pick eight categories total. Uh, what I'm pulling up right now is on share out, I put a note here, number of categories for histogram. There's a file I'm referring to here. Um, so I have 50 data total in my case. Um, so I should pick classes or categories for my histogram. Now, in Excel, uh, what you should do is add two to that. Um, so make eight categories total. Stat Pro always generates an extra category to the left and one to the right. So if I want six categories in the middle, add two to that to account for the one it'll generate to the far left and one to the far right. Now your category length um, back to this handout up on Stat Pro to get your category length or your category width. Take your max value minus your min, divide by your number of categories. Um, if you do that in this case, you get something very close to 10. Okay, this goes up roughly by, uh, let's see here, um, just over 50 or just around 50. Um, and so divide that by six, it gives you nine point something. Um, round your length to a nice number close to what you got. So in this case, we're going to pick 10. Okay, and there is our histogram. Okay, you can also modify the title here. If you right click, you can make the font larger so you can actually read this title. There we go. You can rename this label on the bottom as well. And change the size of the font here as well. These are actually your account amounts owed in dollars. These are actually the averages of them, so we could change that. Okay, and label that axis. Uh, there's many more things you can do with these charts, but that's a good intro for now. Okay.